All right, everyone, the authoritarians within the Biden administration are consolidating even more power to censor and police people's opinions, and they're marketing it well. Um, they're doing sort of like the Patriot Act mislabel the authoritarianism thing. Patriot Act, clean coal, <laughs> social justice, equity, <laughs> racial justice. Uh, the Foreign Malign Influence Center is born. It's a conglomerate of... Uh, different uh, policing capabilities within the realm of censorship sort of under one banner because until now you've had intercompeting agencies and shit like that all involved in the process of attempting to fool the public into thinking that there's a vast trove of constant state misinformation flowing uh, through the TV screen or the computer screen that's not really a thing uh, all nations involve themselves with propaganda Russia does it, the US does it, China does it, fucking France does it, probably Mozambique does it. Um, any state, and some non-state actors by the way, with the resources to do so gets a return on its investment potentially uh, when they spread disinformation. Uh, it happens constantly. You would note uh, all the disinformation about the Nord Stream pipeline claiming that the Russians uh, mysteriously blew up their own gas line despite it being the perfect leverage in order to force negotiations with Western Europe. Never really made sense. Germany looked into it, and not exactly a friendly nation to the Eastern Bloc, but determined that that probably didn't happen, etc., etc. But if you turned on the boob tube uh, in the weeks after the Nord Stream pipeline was hit with bombs, uh, that's what you saw, mainly. Well, it was probably Russia. Uh, Vladimir Putin did this just to screw Europe, and uh, even though he has the ability to literally just shut off the valve on the Russian end. It never made sense. But there are people that believe that, uh, even though it's an incredible thing to believe in, uh, based on state disinfo created by the United States. That is the truth. Um, it was disseminated through the usual gang of idiots in the legacy media, which openly coordinates with the Biden admin, um, and through big tech, which does the same. This is mainly about the tech side of things. Now, what have we seen over the last years? First, we had the NSA spying scandal. And we were assured when the NSA whistleblower Snowden first showed up and told people what was happening, we were assured by the NSA that it was only about collecting data on foreign targets. It was only metadata anyway. See, what didn't make sense is, well, if it's a foreign target with no constitutional rights, why limit it to metadata? It doesn't make sense. We found out through successive releases, each nullifying what was being claimed by the NSA, the CIA, and others, that it's not just foreign influence that was being looked into, uh, or foreign targets. It was people domestically, it was more than metadata, it extended beyond phones at all, and into email and things like that, and, and basically was a rubber stamping spying process, including on US citizens. They used the workaround that they had ever communicated with somebody outside of the United States, and therefore their communications were all fair game. This is what happened. Congress got involved. Ted Cruz threw America under the bus by uh, departing from Rand Paul's filibuster on the subject at the 11th hour uh, in exchange for a band-aid on a gaping wound, and that wound is still there, by the way. He has still not been forgiven for this by, in, in my book. That was a fucking decade ago almost now. And, uh, and so now that data just gets retained by private corporations, even though it's still swept up. It's just not retained directly on a government server. They have to ask nicely to Google to give them the Gmail content and shit. That was, this is a similar concept to what I'm discussing here. Uh, and this is, that's not the only example. Look at the Twitter files. Uh, again, we were assured, no, 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 the government's not involved in attempting to censor U.S. citizens by, you know, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, encouraging that censorship by private companies in name. Uh, but, but they did, uh, both on Facebook and on Twitter. I'm sure it happened with YouTube. We did have a Google whistleblower some years ago, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This is the same thing. It's being peddled as an attempt to fight foreign propaganda. Oh, that's all well and good. Foreign targets don't have constitutional rights. There are basic rights involved under international convention, but the Constitution, the right to privacy under the Fourth Amendment, is not a legal issue if you're spying on somebody in Saudi Arabia. It's not an issue if you're listening in to someone, you're wiretapping somebody who's from, from Argentina. doesn't apply. The right to free expression, while it's generally held by most other countries of any note, uh, the First Amendment in the sense of the respect of speech by the U.S. government doesn't apply to them either. So, I'm going to put this out there even as a libertarian. If the U.S. government were to tell Twitter, hey, ban this foreigner, th this Russian on your platform is doing crazy shit, that's okay. 
They don't have a constitutional right under the U.S. Constitution. The problem is that what we've seen repeatedly is that when we're, for, when we're told that a foreign target is the only central premise and reason for something like this being set up, it turns out that it's bullshit over and over. NSA, Twitter files, the list goes on and on. The attempt to fight disinfo is itself generally disinformation because what we've seen is that the original premise it's sold to big tech, it's sold to the legacy media, and it's sold directly to the public, is, hey, Ivan over there, Ivansky, is trying to influence the election. We have to stop him because people will believe lies. They're going to they're gonna vote at the wrong place because of disinfo. They're going to believe something that's completely wrong because of disinfo. Now, why, uh, why leading others to uh, believe in something that's wrong uh, is, is itself a problem uh, because typically a moron... You know, I mean, if you're, if you're saying that uh, too many morons will stop voting unipartyist because of Ivansky over there, you really are sort of showing your hand that your voters are a bunch of fucking morons now, aren't they? It doesn't seem to be convincing anybody else. What they're saying is that it's about foreign targets, but that's not what it's going to boil down to. And what's going to happen is, well, the foreign target created disinfo. Now it's being spread by these people within the country well, you've got to do something about it. There is no proactive manner, no proactive method, methodology, even if you blanket ban Russian IPs from the Internet at large, for example. VPNs exist. There are workarounds. What you would end up having to do, therefore, to stop the spread of this myth, largely mythological disinformation, and this will be attendant to uh, more censorship by lamestream uh, tech sites, by the way, um, probably discussing this uh, is, is tenuous at best right now. And six months from now, I might not even be able to bring up the existence of the Foreign Malign Influence Center in a critical manner without running afoul of the TOS on a site or two. Uh, mark my words, they're, they're moving towards it in the lead up to the 24 election for a reason. What will happen is that they'll start looking into foreign targets. They'll realize the inevitable, which is, hey, there's no way to stop it from entering the U.S. market or Europe or whatever. And then it spreads, if it's made properly. Of course, uh, if you look at 2016 and the Russian troll farm uh, memes, they didn't really go very far. Elizabeth Warren's meme team was more meaningful as a sort of self-satire, <laughs> as a cell phone, but, you know, people were talking about it for a while. Uh, those memes went nowhere. They probably influenced like 10 people's votes. At great expense, by the way. Putin probably threw those people in a gulag uh, for being so stupid. Uh, but if it's good, it will spread whether it's in meme form or, or just standard disinfo, like a factoid that's not actually a fact, it spreads around, and then they would have to target it domestically, which is what they will lean on big tech sites in the U.S. and Europe to do. Uh, they will be leaning on them to stop the foreign disinfo while misleading them about what's foreign in the first place. They'll probably manufacture it, and they'll use it as a way to censor people for simply being wrong. And that term is very malleable when it comes to political opinions. For instance, any time you talk about budgets, taxes, deficits, etc., costs, you can always look at a bunch of numbers and cherry-pick and compact the data and mix it around a little bit and derive whatever fucking conclusion you want. The fact is that there is no right or wrong in statistics anyway because it, the analysis is completely malleable. It's like, the, it's like the charlatan side of mathematics, as it were. It's like, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's completely bunk, basically. <laughs> lies, damn lies, and statistics. It can be helpful, but only if the person sorting through the info actually knows what the fuck they're doing. Pro tip, most people who are analyzing statistics do not. Uh, I got a B-plus in statistics, actually, at UVM. By the way, it's boring as fucking all hell. <laughs> it's not a class that I enjoyed, but the yeah, professor there was kind enough to say to people, hey, you won't fail my... I'll, I'll at least give you a mercy D if you just show up generally to class. So if you show up, you won't fail. I didn't have to worry about that. I probably shouldn't have showed up quite as much because it was an early morning class, but never mind. Uh, anyway, Foreign Malign Influence Center will be spreading propaganda, and it will be encouraging censorship. Um, it's another deep state effort to try to silence critics, um, try to prevent innovation, and crush independent voices that wield influence in the name of anything other than the Uniparty. That's what it'll, what it'll do. It'll be just like NSA spying, it'll be just like Twittergate, it'll be just like any of a dozen other randomly chosen government initiatives. It's presented one way, but it functions completely differently. We see it over and over again. That's about all. Peace out.